All right, so my team sent me the Chris Rock comedy special, the part on abortion, and so we're gonna do a response video on it. So let's see what he has to say. Abortion is illegal in most of the country. In most of the country, abortion is illegal. So that's actually inaccurate. In most of the country, abortion is legal. And if you take into account population, like states like California, where abortion is legal through all nine months of pregnancy, um, abortion is everywhere. And this is obviously a huge tragedy and injustice. A lot of people say, Chris, you shouldn't talk about abortion. It's a woman's issue. Say, Chris, you shouldn't talk about abortion. It's a woman's issue. And I'm like, hey, I've paid for more abortions than any woman in this room. Okay, so this is the typical um, pro-choice man who says I'm an ally to women that support abortion because I pay for abortions, which is really uh, horrible when you think about it. He's saying I paid for all of these abortions. Like that's his way of showing his support for a woman is to get her pregnant, put her in this terrible position where she's not ready to be pregnant, and then abandoning her in an abortion clinic and giving her a few hundred bucks to pay for the death of her baby. So it's really actually dark. It away is, I think, satirizing, um, making fun of the pro-choice ally man who's an ally to pro-choice women. See, when I go to the clinic, I say, give me the usual. <laughs> When I go in there, they give me a punch card. Here you go. I mean, it's, it's like abortion has birth control, right? That's what he's making fun of. And unfortunately, that's what it is um, in many parts of the country. Because if you don't see it as a human life, if it's not killing a baby, then yeah, have as many abortions as you want. So in a way, he's making fun of what is ultimately the pro-choice position. But it's very backhanded. The audience doesn't really know it yet. Two more and I get a free smoothie. <laughs> Mango. Right, pro-life, pro-choice. Pro-life, pro-choice, what are you, what are you? Going to get a smoothie is getting an abortion. So already he's going into territory to show the destigmatization of abortion for those who are pro-choice that they would even talk about it like, oh, you know, making this life-shattering decision that ends the life of another person is like getting a punch card for a smoothie. What are you, what are you? I have two beautiful daughters. I have two beautiful daughters, right? And so there's a part of me, there's a part of me that's pro-life. Yeah, yeah, because they're two beautiful daughters and you were probably excited when you found out that your wife or your partner was pregnant with them and they're human beings and you knew it when they were conceived. You knew it when you first heard the heartbeat if you were privileged to be there. These daughters did not become your daughters at birth, Chris, and he kind of knows it or he does know it. And so here he is. Now he's going to go into uh, making the audience uncomfortable. Let's watch. Okay. Because I'm definitely pro their lives. Yeah. You are. So, I mean, he's showing here he's pro their lives. He chose life for them, obviously, and his partner, his wife. So they have these two beautiful daughters. So are you not, do they, would they not have had value, Chris, if you hadn't felt pro their lives before birth? I mean, the whole argument falls apart. Are you saying they're only your beautiful daughters because you chose them? Or would they have still been beautiful daughters worthy of protection even if you were that guy just paying for abortions like they're fruit smoothies? Okay. So there's a part of me that's pro-life. But since I love my daughters unconditionally, I love them not just as little girls, I love them as grown women, I want my daughters to live in a world where they have complete control of their bodies, okay? Okay, this is so stupid. <laughs> this is like the talking point of the century for pro-choicers. It's like, I'm so pro-woman that I want women to kill their children and for me as the pro-choice dude to just be able to drive them to the abortion clinic and punch the stamp card uh, stamp the punch card to get the abortion, and that's my big contribution as a man. No, that's gross. And women are not empowered by killing our children. I mean, the thing that we need and we deserve is support, and men are not going to just send us off to an abortion clinic and be irresponsible and losers. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just stupid. It's like he had to put this in there in his little skit because 
this is like the talking point of the century for pro-choicers and his audience is obviously mostly pro-choice in this or pro-abortion in this um auditorium but um it's just a stupid lie okay and they're zooming on this woman who is clapping like i'm yeah i'm pro-choice let's see what happens next because of that i am pro-choice i'm absolutely pro-choice okay i believe women should have the right to kill babies <laughs> there you go okay so he just said it i wonder how that lady who was copying before felt when he just said that he just called it what it is what abortion is i think it's okay you should be able to kill your baby that's right i'm on your side I believe you should have the right to kill as- Kind of starting to roast the pro-choice position. As many babies as you want. <laughs> kill them all, I don't give a f Yeah, because if they're not, if it's, if you're right, this bodily autonomy right that it claims you can do whatever you want with your body, even if it is killing another body, another person, another person, that child in the womb, um, if you have that total right, then why not? Why not just kill as many babies in the womb as possible? Why not just have unlimited abortions and have abortions uh, every year on the year and have a, be a dude and just pay for hundreds and hundreds of abortions? Why is that gross? Why is that gross if it's not a human life? Uh, but what everybody knows in the room and what Chris is saying, you know, hey, it's killing a baby. I mean, they know. He knows. But let's not get it twisted. It is killing a baby. Because whenever I pay for an abortion, I request a dead baby. Sometimes I call up the doctor like a hitman. Is it done? There it is. There it is. What do you pay for with an abortion? A dead baby. You don't want that baby born alive. You want a dead baby. And then he calls it like calling the abortionist is like calling up a hitman. This is, by the way, a Pope Francis line. Pope Francis has called abortion like hiring a hitman. So he's using the Pope's material. Get your own material, Chris. Come on. <laughs> ah! And people argue, first trimester, second trimester, first trimester, second trimester. I think women should have the right to kill a baby until he's four years old. I don't even think the audience knows why they're laughing at this point. They're laughing because it sounds absurd, um, but it's actually not absurd what he's saying. It's totally logical. Because the whole defining line for abortion activists, they, they claim anyways, is that, oh, once it's born, then it's not a threat to the woman's bodily autonomy. Therefore, you should not kill a born child because, because the child's outside of the woman and not inside the woman. Uh, therefore, she's good and her rights are fine. And so, you know, carry on, protect that life now. But that's not really how it works. Anybody who's had a child knows that once you have a child, you now have to do things with your body to take care of that child's body. And if you're a new mother, you have to nurse that child. You have to be up in the night with that child. You have to clothe that child. You have to use your body, get out of bed at 3 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., like every hour sometimes. Use your body to literally give sustenance to that child's body. And if you don't do that as a parent, then you can be charged with criminal neglect. You can actually go to jail and you can lose custody of your child. So, you know, this idea that our bodily autonomy is then protected when the baby's born um, because, you know, we don't have to do anything anymore to their body is completely false. The reality is we have rights and responsibilities with our bodies and a woman who's pregnant has a right to that child and being the mother of that child, but then she has a responsibility in, a, in combination with that right to care for that child and to nurture that child. And same with a born child for parents of a born child, both men and women. That's right, trimester, semester. I mean, why not? Why not? Why not? And by the way, there's some people like Peter Singer, who is an ethicist at um, Yale University, who says, yeah, I mean, the child in, in the first few months after birth, it should be okay to kill them. Fair game. The parents deem that the appropriate thing. So what he's saying is not crazy in some circles of academia that are making the arguments for abortion, um, not just before birth, but after. <laughs> I think you should be able to kill a baby till you get that first report card. <laughs> Whoa! 
He ain't never getting a scholarship. <laughs> so, okay, you can finish watching Stranger Things. <laughs> but when it's over, we going to the clinic. I mean, that's what abortion is. It's killing that child just years earlier. So he's, it's a very, um, it's a really, uh, I think, scathing rebuke right now of pro-choice ideology, what Chris Rock is doing. He's really roasting the audience. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. But that's what comedy does. It makes you uncomfortable as you're being roasted, and it kind of makes you laugh, and that's what he's doing. <laughs> Hurry up, I'm trying to get a smoothie. <laughs> there he goes, the smoothie. He's making it the same. I mean, that's what Chris Rock has just done. It's brilliant. It's the same. You go to the abortion, or go to the clinic to get the abortion. It's like punching, you know, punching the car to get a smoothie, and then you take the four-year-old in to kill him, or the seven-year-old in to kill him, and it's like taking the again to get that punch that card to get the smoothie he's showing the logical progression of how arguing to kill a child before birth is the same as arguing to kill a child after birth <laughs> that's right pro-life pro-choice i'm pro-choice i'm pro-choice i'm pro-right choice i'm pro-good choice i'm pro-practical choice, pro choice. Okay, me too. <laughs> me too, Chris. And the right, good, practical choice is never to kill a child. No, no, no. Another, whether they're going to get their report card or their few months in utero and their little heart's beating, doesn't matter. Human life, don't kill them. Pretty simple. Like, ladies, ladies, listen to me. If you have to pay for your own abortion, you should get an abortion. What he's saying here is, if you have to, if you basically don't, don't get pregnant with a poor guy, is what he's saying. Don't get pregnant with a poor guy, because you have to pay for the abortion afterwards. You shouldn't have gotten pregnant in the first place. How about don't get pregnant with a guy unless you want to be pregnant with that guy, and that guy is someone who's committed to you for life and loves you and is going to serve you and your child and build a life with you. How about that? I mean, have we thought about that? 86% of women who have abortions are unmarried. 86%. 86% of, of women who have abortions are unmarried. That means they're with deadbeat guys that most of the time are the ones driving them to the clinic, like the scenario earlier. What if we as women demanded better and more for ourselves and our children than this sort of stupid, cruel lack of accountability, lack of commitment? I mean, that's, that's the best advice. The advice of like, make sure he's rich enough to kill the baby at least, is like the bottom of the barrel uh, advice. And also for women too. Listen, if you're not ready to be a mother, if you're not ready to have children, then why are we having sex? What are you doing? And that doesn't mean every act of sex is gonna bring life into the world. No, you're only fertile for a few days a month. But what happened to our responsibility as women too? I mean, it takes two, men and women. We should both have responsibility. And the way to hold men accountable is by holding ourselves accountable.